In this segment, you will learn how to attach and space the wire. You will learn about options for strength of high tensile wire and where to find spacing recommendations for the animals you wish to control. You'll learn how to pay out the wire and attach it to the posts. If you're electrifying your fence, this segment will cover the types of insulators and the procedures for installing them. You'll also learn how to attach crimping sleeves and how to make inline splices. The next component you will install is the fence wire. High tensile wire comes in two strength ratings, 200,000 pounds per square inch or PSI or 170,000 PSI. We recommend 200,000 PSI wire for its superior breaking strength and resistance to elongation, stretching, and sagging. The number of wires and their spacing will vary depending on the animal you are containing. Refer to the spacing guide using a tape or pre-marked spacer for a guide. Mark your desired wire spacing on fence posts using a lumber crayon or marker. Now you're ready to pay out the fence wire using the spinning jenny. Generally place wire on the side of the post that will have animal pressure. This means the post will resist the animal's pressure at the connection rather than at the staple. Before stringing wire, determine which wires will be electrified. So, if needed, thin tube insulators can be placed on the wire as it is strung. To avoid wire tangling, string one strand of wire around the enclosure and attach it to the posts before stringing the next. The bottom wire is the guide wire. Next to the guide wire are our next two wires, which were previously laid out and will be the first to be attached. Any wire on your fence can easily be electrified, making the fence a psychological barrier as well as a physical one. One electrified wire should be positioned at the animal's nose height, causing it to back up if it touches the fence wire. You have several options to insulate the electrified wires at the line posts to prevent voltage loss. Thin tube insulator, porcelain insulators, and plastic insulators. The first option is a thin tube insulator, which are the most commonly used insulators for high tensile fences and can be used on wood posts. These 4-inch hollow tubes have fins on the outer edge, which holds them in place on the post while allowing the wire to move freely through the tube. These tube insulators should be put on the wire before both ends are attached. Simply place the insulators on the wire as you pay it out. It is a good idea to put extra tube insulators on the wire before the ends are connected in case you miss adding any as you pay out the wire. Thin tube insulators attach to wood posts with a staple. Be sure to use 8 or 9 gauge class 3 galvanized barb type staples for longest product life. Drive staples leaving a quarter inch gap allowing wire to move freely beneath it. Dip and rise posts require a special stapling technique so the wire doesn't pull the staple out of the posts. Secure each wire strand at both end posts with at least two 12.5 gauge crimping sleeves. For electrified wires, you will need a wraparound insulator at the end posts. You can use 12.5 gauge insulated wire as we are using here, or use the normal wire with an insulator tube for jumping electrical connections between fence wires. If you forget to add additional crimping sleeves, you can also use a wire tap as we are using here. Crimping sleeves are crimped onto the wire using the specialized crimping tool. Crimping sleeves are made from high-grade aluminum with a carborundum grit inside to prevent the wire from slipping through. This connection provides the same strength as the wire itself. Position the sleeves directly next to each other for maximum holding strength. As a rule of thumb, Use two to three crimping sleeves at friction points and for inline strainers, and four crimping sleeves for an inline splice. To keep the wire in its correct position at the end posts until final tension is applied, staple it in place. For insulated electrified wire, place a staple above and below the wraparound insulator to hold it on its predetermined mark. This keeps the staple from cutting through the insulator and shorting out the fence. All of the fence wire strands should now be strung around the perimeter of your fence and attached to the posts. Be sure you leave plenty of slack before cutting the wire. You will need as many as 12 to 18 inches of extra cable to install strainers. So once your wire is attached at both ends, your wire should be hanging loose. It's far better to have too much wire than not enough. 